I'm Joan O'Shaughnessy. I'm the ecologist for the Dixon Prairie and the Skokie River Corridor at the Chicago Botanic Garden. One of the problems that we have in these native habitats are invasive plant species. You're seeing one of them right here, garlic mustard, or the Latin Eliaria petiolata, in the mustard family. The invasive species are plants that come in and have an impact on the native system, the native ecosystem that's there by crowding out native plants or doing other types of things that impact the functioning of that system. First of all, it would be good to be able to identify garlic mustard. Here is a first year rosette. This is a two year plant uh, called a biennial. What that means is the first year it sends up this green rosette and the second year the stalk comes up and the flowers are on the stalk and it's then, after it sets its seed, completed its, its life cycle. First year rosette, if you can see, is sort of round or kidney shaped. The leaves on the second year stem are more triangular. Let me just pull this right here, more triangular. And then there's this fairly tall stalk that sent, gets sent up, although plants can be as short as a few inches as well and the flowers then are clustered on the top and you begin to get the fruit it's called a salik begin uh, developing and at this point in time it's not nearly ripe. A way to identify this plant when it's not its flower is to crush it and smell it because it, it does smell like it, its name suggests garlic mustard and in fact was introduced into this country from Europe in the 1800s as a medicinal and a food herb. In moist soils, this is really easy to pull. After a rain event, wait until the soils are no longer wet or soggy, and it should be very easy to pull. In a field like this, where we have so much of it, I'm actually going to be mowing this garlic mustard, and I'm doing a timing with respect to the mowing. Mowing be, um, before those salikes or fruits could ripen and set seed, because plants still after they have been pulled still can go through a ripening process and that seed get distributed um, and also timing it such that the plant has exhausted a good amount of its resources. So what's the problem with garlic mustard? Well as you can see here in this meadow it's creating the entire canopy meaning the entire level that gets light from the sun and therefore depriving plants underneath of the sun that they need to grow. Another thing that garlic mustard does is it, it um, draws pollinators away from your native plants. So a butterfly such as the checkered white, instead of going to your native mustard, is going to go to garlic mustard and those native plants then won't be pollinated and then won't be setting fruit. The research shows that garlic mustard secretes chemicals that impact the native fungus in the soil and that fungus has associations with the native plants uh, in these habitats, in particular species such as oaks. We don't do anything uh, in terms of pulling the garlic mustard in the first year. Thousands of seedlings um, are grown and a numbers of those through competition with itself die off. We wait until the second year, until the near the end of the life cycle of the garlic mustard before we pull it. So despite your desire not to necessarily have it, just wait until the second year, till it's the end of its life cycle and then pull the garlic mustard. I'd recommend that you brush off your boots after working in an area with garlic mustard so that you don't end up um, accidentally carrying the seed into other areas and helping to disperse this plant. I encourage you to come out to the Chicago Botanic Garden on World Environment Day. You can learn about other invasive species that we manage out here. And more importantly, you can learn about the native systems, the prairie, and the river system here at the garden.